You are now tuned into the Ask the Elder Show, where your host, Sir Walter Jones, answers your most challenging questions. Got questions about sex, Christian living, or politics? He's got the answer from a biblical perspective. That's right, Ask the Elder, and let's change your life today. Why do you sit there and doubt, oh my friend? I said, why? Hello, 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 everybody out there in Radio Land. This is Elder Walter Jones, affectionately known as Sir Walter, and we are glad to be here. We are glad to be numbered among the living. And we're among the dead, too. <laughs> but I'm so glad we're among <laughs> those who are alive, who I can see, and they can see me back. <laughs> Amen. We're here also with Annette. Say hello, Annette. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Would you be mine? Could you be <laughs> mine? Won't you be? Mr. Rogers. My neighbor. Yes. God, we thank you for your presence, your, your blessings. We thank you for life. We thank you for liberty. We thank you for the ability to even love, God. You're giving us the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace, yes. God. We live by that great trinity. <laughs> God, we want you to continue to be in our lives. We call you and you answer. So, God, please never leave us. Don't take your spirit from us. Yes, Today, God. we're going to remove ourselves that you might show yourself strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What's our scripture for today? Our scripture, opening scripture, 1 Peter 3 and 15. What does that say? But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts uh-huh. and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You got questions. We got answers. Yes. And we will give them from a biblical perspective. We go through scriptures from Genesis two revelations all right and all that stuff in between mm-hmm. <laughs> and we try to find the answer for you uh and the bible is very expressive and and very plain in some things some things it, it t- tends to elude to mm-hmm. some things it don't talk about at all yes uh and sometimes we get to read the bible about what it don't say all right <laughs> that just confused america i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> when you keep listening to our show we do this every day uh <laughs> We d- I don't well, confuse I the people you mean? Yeah, I just confuse myself. <laughs> we don't do this every day on this station. No, we don't. But we do it on this station twice a week. That's right. Other stations, that's another story. I think you got it. Yeah, Mondays at 1230 here, uh, yes. Chicago time, and then uh, Thursdays at 5 yes. o'clock. All right. Today's subject is about generational curses. Wow. Okay. You've heard about those, right? I have. All right. I wonder what angle you're going to go with. Oh, you know, I'm going to go there. Yes. This is Sir Walter. Yes, it is. We we angle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, generational curses, I hear that a lot more than I've ever had before in my life. Mm-hmm. Right? Somehow, some way, the Pentecostal church has allowed this to come come into our, our homes and houses of worship. If something happens to you and you notice that it's happening to, um, well, if you're looking at a family and you see that the family tend to be doing the same mm-hmm. thing right uh, uh generation after generation you know the grandfather was this way and then the son and then the grandson and the grand great grandson on all usually they that's a generational curse okay we like to call it that yes right yeah do you believe in those <laughs> <laughs> well um yes i do all right tell me why well you know and i believe this that there are things that will pass down from generation to generation okay sometimes unknowingly Uh uh-huh um and you know while it may not be the correct title correct label i see but i do believe that uh things do pass down i Um, actually did you believe in generational (laughs) curse i didn't ask you to be a politician a lawyer or oprah yes i do believe in generational curses and i know you're going to go another way Uh uh-huh yes because yeah. I know you. And you know me. So, what is a curse? Well, um, a curse is something that um, that that's not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see. And if I ask that question to the average person in church <laughs> who said you got a generational curse, they can't really give you a definition. Right, right, right. right? This is true. Okay. There was two di- different types of curses. Okay. One curse comes from God. Okay. Mm-hmm. And another curse comes from witchcraft or satanic okay. uh, uh, influence. All right. All right? Okay. You got that? Yes. Okay, but when we were reading scripture, we see we see the curse that God talks about. All right. 
All right. Which is. But we have to define is that's what what we define curse today. Is it the same kind of curse as witchcraft? Curse? Okay. Okay. Because okay? we when we say when we think about we talk, we think about voodoo. And we think about, you know, how they take the dolls and they take a pen and stick it in the p- a pen in the doll. And then the 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 witch makes a, the doll and the, the likeness of that person that they really right, hate. Right, right. You know, and they put this curse on them and, they, you know, on the doll. And the doll is attached to that person. They stick pins in it and that person is hurting. And they feel these pain when they stick a pen in the, and all these things like that. You know, I know we, we look at this stuff in America and say, well, they wrote they, this. This is this is. um this is uh, stuff on in the movies, on TV. Not really true, you mm-hmm. know, fictional, yada, yada. But we don't go over to the other countries. True. And see the type of demonic uh, atmosphere that's going uh-huh. on over there. Uh-huh. I mean, I've heard from, from some foreign missionaries that it's really bad over there. Yeah. Really bad. And they right. see things that we won't see. Okay. That we probably will never see. Okay. Okay. So wherever there is a, there's a lot of demonic um, worship going on mm-hmm. in certain areas. And demons are territorial. Okay. And they're territorial over your home and in your churches. Mm-hmm. Certain churches, mm-hmm. you've noticed, yeah. have a certain type of sin or characteristic. True. Yes. They do. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of the homosexuals are at yes. that church. Yes, yes. I sure thought about that. All mm-hmm. of the whoremongers are at that church. Right. I've been to a church where all everybody in the choir, the women, were sleeping with each other. Oh, Lord Jesus. All the women were sleeping with each other in the same choir. Mm. Okay. That's that, that, the particular, that particular spirit. Has hovered over that particular choir wow. or, or that church. That wow. is. Families seem to have the same thing. So there's a difference between demonic possession over okay. a territory. There are certain cities that that are known for certain uh, sins and spirits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Atlanta, <laughs> San Francisco. Hmm. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying nothing. Waco, Texas. <laughs> okay. mercy, All right, if you're mercy. from Waco, Texas, you don't even know what I mean. Right. Y'all, are, y'all, are, y'all, a beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> Just because that wacko over there right. from Waco did what the he wacko did, from Waco. don't mean that that, that should have been a something on the whole city. Because I know some good people over there in Waco, Texas. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Here's what this thing says. It says, there is a trend in the church today to try to blame every sin and, prob- and problem on some sort of generational curse. Mm. This is not biblical. Ooh. Oh, we got a lot of scriptures today. Sound like you're going to burst somebody's bubble. Whew. All you got to do is read the word. Uh, God's warning to visit iniquity on future generations is part of the Old Testament law. Okay. All right. And we are hooked on the Old Testament. <laughs> okay. Yes, we are. Mm. You go into your average Pentecostal church. Mm-hmm. We are hooked on Old Testament. Hooked, huh? Hooked. We are absolutely obsessed over it. So okay? we're living in the past. Oh man, we are. Okay. And we can't justify some things that happen because we're so hooked on Old Testament, right? And the things that we're trying to follow in Old Testament that did not even apply to us, right? God wasn't talking to us, right? But we apply it to our lives and wonder why some things ain't working for us in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Because you're hooked on the Old Testament. Right. There's something in the Old Testament that was poor for the law. And there's some there's some things that were also in the law that we can apply. Mm-hmm. We can adopt. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the, the Old Testament was for the for the natural. It's okay. not first natural, then spirit. Then spirit. Okay. Right. So natural things. Because I love catfish. It's good stuff. Mm. But in the book of Leviticus, it tells us it's not good for you to eat it. Wow. You know, it's a scavenger. Right. It eats everything at the bottom of the ocean. I know some people that don't eat it because of because that. Because of that. But that's probably why it tastes so good because it eats everything. It eats it everything. Sure Weird, good. ain't it? Yes. But we don't go to hell for eating catfish. No. God was talking to the Jews back in Leviticus mm-hmm. about it. He said, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Then the mm-hmm. New Testament came around. Then think God kind of reversed some things. But he, he still, it wasn't given to us for the, in the first reason. Okay. So it ain't needing us. God wasn't even talking to us when, this, when he relaxed the, the, the law. Mm-hmm. It wasn't to us. Mm. But here's the thing. Catfish still not really good for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Eating pig is not a sin. Right. Eating pig, if you were Le- uh, Levitical, in the Levitical area, True. in a Jew, that was a sin. That's right. Okay. Uh, but today it's not a sin, but yet it's still not healthy. Right. So what am I saying here? What are you saying? I'm saying... <laughs> Even though things in the Old Testament we don't have to follow because they were the law, uh-huh. we still should not follow. We should still apply some of those things because it's still not healthy for us. Okay. 
You get what I'm saying? Okay. All right. That's so I don't have to be a Jew uh, because I don't eat pork. Right. Doesn't make me a Jew. It just True. means that I'm health conscious. Exactly. You got that? Yeah, I got it. Good. I know it took me a while to get there. You got there. Yeah. <laughs> A generation curse was a consequence for a specific nation, Israel, for mm-hmm. a specific sin, which is idolatry. Mm. God cursed you because of idolatry. Okay. You got that? Okay. Y'all come into idolatry? Ooh, a lot of people are. In what area? In a lot of areas when they, they worship things or people. Like football? Yeah. And Oprah? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the history books of the Old Testament, especially Judges, contain the record of this divine punishment meted out. The cure for a generational curse has always been. I'm going to talk about that later. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go there in a minute. See, because I don't want to ruin. Uh, you know how preachers, you know, they, they don't. Yeah, wanna, y'all do. They don't want to go too early. Give you, the, <laughs> give you the tree of life too early. <laughs> <laughs> go to Exodus 3. Uh, 34, that is. Exodus 34, 6 through 7. What does it say? And the Lord passed by before him uh-huh. and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, yeah. keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. He forgives those transgressions. He forgives sins. Mm-hmm. He, this is the God that does that. Uh huh. And that will by no means clear the guilty. <laughs> you, uh, ain't, you ain't getting away. Wow. Uh-huh. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers uh-huh. upon the children. See? Mm-hmm. Visiting the iniquities of the father. That means whatever trespass the father did, whatever sin, right. he's going he gonna, to he gonna revisit it and mm-hmm. bring it upon the children. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And upon the children's children. Grandkids. Wow. Unto the third and to the fourth generation. Wow. That's where we get generational curses from. God said, I'm going to do it. He told uh, David sin, remember, with Bathsheba? Right. Remember that? Yeah. And uh, Big time. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Now, God didn't allow him to die because he was supposed to die by the law. He was supposed to die. Okay. God didn't. Right. Uh, God forgave him. Right. Uh, but then he says, uh, evil will never leave your house. Mm. Mm. And his kids acted a fool. Mm. His, his kids. Okay. Remember, one, one. Went into his own sister. Yeah. Okay. And Solomon wasn't that great either. He was a, he was a great king, very wise, very rich, but he began to worship other idols. Right. And gods, and uh, messing around with uh, all those women. He had seven hundred concubines, three hundred wives, or right. was it the other way around? Oh, he was messed up. He started yeah. worshiping the god of Ashtaroth, and yes, all, uh, he was a mess. Yes. That was David's boy. Yeah. <laughs> the house of David was uh, was evil. Ugh. For for generation after generation, okay. Uh, what does uh, Deut- Deuteronomy eleven twenty six to twenty eight say? Behold, what I set before you this day mm-hmm. a blessing, yeah, and a curse. Uh, who's saying this? Mm. Who's say- who's talking here? The Lord. Yeah, I'm give. I'll give you a blessing, and uh, I'll I'll give you a curse. Uh. He's gonna do this. Yes. Now we gotta define curse though, because you know ain't no evil in gotta God. Gotta define it. Yes. Ain't no evil in God. Right. Even though God uh uh said they did the Bible said that the evil came upon Saul. An evil spirit. God put an evil spirit on, on Saul. That's that's mm-hmm. what scripture says. Remember mm-hmm. when he and David came and played the evil spirit off of Saul? Right. All right. And said it came from God. Right. But we have to be careful how we're gonna read that, uh, yes. interpret that in King James. Because mm-hmm. Really, what God did was he allowed the devil yes. to do something to yes. Saul. And when we read 1611 King James, mm-hmm. we who lives in 2013 <laughs> <laughs> tend to uh, uh, use it in our Western uh, uh, interpretation, analogy of, of, of phrases and poetic justice, and yada, yada, yada. Right. So we have to be careful. That's why it's good to read Bible in Hebrew and, and Greek. Okay. And things like that. Okay. okay. Continue with that. A blessing mm-hmm. if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, yeah. which I command you this day. Mm-hmm. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Okay, he was telling them, if you don't do this, then I will present this curse upon you. Right. Uh-huh. But turn aside out of the way, yeah. which I command you this day, to go after other gods, mm-hmm. which ye have not known. Okay, go to Leviticus 26, 39. Leviticus 26, 39. Through 42. 
And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity wow. in, in your enemy's land. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. Mm-hmm. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, mm-hmm. And that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, Mm -hmm. and have brought them into the land of their enemies, Mm -hmm. if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, Mm -hmm. and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, Mm -hmm. then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, Mm -hmm. and also my covenant with Isaac, Mm -hmm. and also my covenant with Abraham, Mm -hmm. will I remember, Mm -hmm. and I will remember the land. Mm -hmm. He says, so you pray not only for yourself, but you pray for your father as well. So if he's going to curse you because of your father's iniquities, then in order to get out of it, you can also help your father. He says, pray for also for your father. Okay. <laughs> you didn't read that. Did you? It, I mean, you read it, but you didn't hear that. Did right, you? right. It's in there. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> it says, the word curse in Deuteronomy 11 and 26, what you just read, uh-huh. comes from the Hebrew kualat, Q-A-L-A-H, kuala. Okay. Sound like that? Pronounce it right. Kuala. Q- or kuala. 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 I think it's more Kuala, yeah. which which is itself a derivative of uh, Kualel. Hmm. Okay. The meaning is to abase, mm-hmm. to vilify, okay, to bring into contempt, mm-hmm. to make despicable. Hmm. All right. Now this is this is the curse, the the definition of curse in the scriptures. Okay. Is this is it sounding like the same curse that we've been we think it is? As far as witchcraft and, you you know, you're going to be boils on your face because, you know, there's a spell on you. Wow. Does this sound like the same curse? Oh. See, we have to be careful how we define this stuff. Yeah. Again, it means to abase, vilify. Y'all write this down and go to Google. Right. <laughs> to bring into contempt. When you are of a contempt of court because okay. you did something in court. Right. What happens to you? When you're in contempt? Of court. They put you out. They did. Uh-huh. Do they, do they, do they, uh, they just put you away. They yeah. put you in time out, don't they? <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah, you go, you go sometimes they just, they just put you in jail for a few days or maybe right. just for a few hours. Yeah. Okay. To make despicable. You are held, you are held as despicable. We're going to separate you. Okay. Okay. All of which is bad enough, but mm-hmm. this does not truly amount to the concept of curse, which is found within witchcraft. Mm. So we are we using this phrase right, this word right, when we say it's generation of curses? Right. Nevertheless, no, we're, uh-huh. not, we're not. Okay, all right, because I'm giving you the meaning of what what Deuteronomy 11 and 26 in Hebrew. Mm-hmm. When okay. We, okay. Nevertheless, the meaning seems clear that sinful behavior would tend to uh, run in families in which certain sinful or immoral practices had been tolerated by an earlier generation or generations within that family. One might say that such families would tend to come to earn and to deserve their uh, sinfulness and the resulting suffering Mm -hmm. and lack of wholesome achievement, which might otherwise have been available to them. Mm. So here's what we're going to do. Go to Deuteronomy 24 and 16. Okay. The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Uh Uh-huh. Mm. Uh Uh-huh. You see what God is doing here now? Okay. He's recanting. Mm. Apparently, he laid a law down when you was reading Exodus 34, Deuteronomy 11, Leviticus 26. Right. Okay. But, but, But in Deuteronomy 24, apparently he's... You know, you know, God sees everything. He sees the future. Yeah. He already know. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's but, so nice. Yeah. Outside of that, he said, okay, now that you seem to have done this, here's now the new law. What is it saying? The father shall not be put to death for the children. Okay. Whatever your children did, I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to punish you, father. Mm-hmm. And vice versa? Mm-hmm. Neither uh-huh. shall the children be put to death for the father. Yes. Every man shall be put to death for his own Sin. Everything you did now, yeah. <laughs> if you if y'all going to live in the Old Testament, right? Okay, now you can't say uh, you know, you know, if you're going to preach out of the Old Testament, you got to preach it all. Okay, if you're going to live by, I mean, not live. so much preach out of it, 
But if you're going to live by it, you got to live by all of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, we're talking about curses. Because we're going to get to the point where you're going to realize that God doesn't curse anymore. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. Mm. We'll find out why. Wow. In a minute. Did you read all of that? Yes. Okay. Go to Ezekiel 18.20. And what does it say? The soul that sinneth. That soul, not souls. Correct. Not generations. Uh Uh-huh. It shall die. Uh Uh-huh. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. No more. Hmm. Keep going. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Uh Uh-huh. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Yes, Lord. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Do you still believe in generational curses? (laughs) (laughs) I think it must be labeled something else there. Okay. All right. I'm hoping I'm helping some of you out there. If you just tuned in, this is the Ask the Elder Show. We come strong with these hard, hot topics that you ask. I, I don't ask these questions out of my mind. These I be reading on Facebook. I get my my questions from Facebook right. and Twitter right. and maybe sometimes YouTube. Uh-huh. Right? And then I go to church, okay. y'all's churches, <laughs> and sometimes I see some hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> questions <laughs> it, are derived from oh, that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, oh, my Lord, I, I better talk about this on my show right. so that we can fix this, this problem. I'm not going to fix the world because I can't right. fix myself sometimes. Uh, All right? Okay. But I, when I see something, I have to address it. Because God has given me the commission to do that. Exactly. I'm an, I'm an ordained man of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Is my now I can't ignore it. Mm-hmm. Or God's gonna hold me accountable. Yes. For not. And I got. I'm on the radio now. Yes. I that we have six million uh, viewers, listeners on listeners. this station here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I would wish that six million listening to me right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I don't know who out there listening. Exactly. Unless, uh, 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 until somebody. somebody hit me up on Facebook or on my, my sometimes they call me on my phone or text or what have you, they tell me they're listening. Mm-hmm. And I get a lot of people tell me that they enjoy the show. Sometimes Good. weeks later when I didn't, I didn't know they were alive. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> but they're listening on their tune-in apps. Okay. And what have you. Okay. Now, here's the answer. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, uh-huh. if any man be in Christ. Any one man. Correct. Yeah. He is a new creature. How can you be cursed if God is telling you you're a new creature and you're mm. in Christ? What? Old things are passed the away. The old curses are passed away. Hmm. Yeah. Behold, yeah. all things are become new. Some things are new. All. All of it. Yeah. Uh, Romans 8 and 1. What does it say? There is therefore what? now no condemnation. When? There's no <laughs> condemnation? To them. Wait, wait, go back. I'm there sorry. is therefore when no condemnation. Now. Right now. Now. No condemnation. No condemnation. Well, to who? To them which are in Christ Jesus. I think you're almost getting the answer here. <laughs> we keep pointing back to the same person. Right. Keep going. Who walk not after the flesh, uh-huh. but after the spirit. Yes. This is the answer here. Okay, now, when you go to the Lord for yourself, then the Lord takes you into where he is. Mm-hmm. He takes you out of all of this bondage and the old you. Right. You become new, and right. recreated um, almost in the spirit realm. Okay? And then uh, John 8 and 36 seals it. Mm-hmm. And what does it say? If the Son, uh-huh. therefore, shall make you free. If the Son, Jesus, makes you free, then what? Ye shall be free. How much? Indeed. Ha <laughs> ha! You felt that, huh? Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> that means indeed, that means now, that means throughout, through and from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Mm-hmm. You've got nothing in or out that's, that's, that's going to cause you to, to uh, you can't be, you just, it just, nothing can happen to you other than you being poked by the devil. Okay. Okay, you're going to be. You know, the, there's, the devil still is present because, you know, the uh, I try to do good, but evil. Evil is present. It's present. Mm-hmm. He's always there, all right? Right. But right. you're still sealed yes. in the Lord. Yes. And because you're sealed in the Lord, there can't be a curse placed upon you, not mm-hmm. by God especially. True. Okay? All right. Now, now here's the thing. <clears throat> then the question out there in the radio land is, then how is it that so many in the same family seem to have the same characteristics Mm. or issues or issues okay can you answer that i cannot because that's what i what i've heard people focus on as being generational curses Mm -hmm. like um i think i heard on a program one time about this man this young man who was an alcoholic Mm -hmm. now he never knew his father yes and, you know, he, you know, grew up or whatever, never really knew his father. He, be- he became a uh, serious alcoholic. Mm-hmm. 
I, years later, when the Lord saved him and delivered him, he found his, I mean, he found out about his father. I don't know uh -huh. if his father had passed at that time, but found out that his father was an alcoholic. Uh -huh. So, you know, things like that, that's yes. what people label and say yes. there are generational curses. Yes. Or even, uh -huh. and I don't know who I'm making anybody upset, but when they have children out of wedlock. Yes. You know, uh -huh. and it's like it's. Seem like it's constant, the yes. mother, then the daughter, yes. then the grand, you know, uh -huh. and it's like constant over and over and over again. So Absolutely. that's, I've heard people label those as generational curses. A exactly. And I think they're labeling wrong. You've you discovered the scripture that we're labeling that wrong. Okay. okay. But number two, there's the physiological area here. There is the, there is the natural man here. There is the, uh, the uh, persuasion or... The, the ability to see something and want to be like something. Okay. Like uh, how some women come out of an abusive relationship uh -huh. and they go fall in love again right back into an abusive relationship. Okay. There is, was that a curse? Or is that something neurological? Is that something mental, psychological in that person that she feels that she only loved if somebody beat her? Right. Okay, now you graduated as you got a psychology degree. Yes. Okay, you studied this stuff mm -hmm. in depth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are some people who will look at you and look at your behavior and say, this is probably normal. Okay. If I'm a child and I'm being raised by a father who's either an alcoholic or he's abusive or he don't, it seems like when he hits, his, he hits my mom, maybe that's normal. Right. Then he, then right. this boy grows up, he gets married and he hits his woman. Right. His Thinking wife. That's normal. That's normal. Is that a generational curse or is that just you mocking or, or, or copying after the behavior in an environment that you that think you see. is normal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so there are tricks that the devil uses. Now, can he read your mind, the devil? Oh, wow. Can he read your mind? Now, be careful now. I know I want to be careful because, mm -hmm. you know, you hear some people say, I don't want to say it out loud because the devil will hear me. So you see what I'm saying? That's ridiculous. <laughs> because if the devil could read your mind, that would make him omnipotent. All right now. Is he omnipotent? No. He's not all powerful, is he? No. But it seemed like he reads your mind, but what he's doing is he's watching your behavior. Yes. He can't read your mind. Okay. He don't have that ability. Right. We've given him more power than he has. Okay. So when we see somebody doing things that, ah, uh, see, see that's, a, that's a curse on him because now the devil already knew what you're going to do because he knows you wake up at 6 o'clock every morning. He sees you. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he sees you drive down that same route. Right. He sees what you do all day long and go home. And he, 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 he takes a, a, a view of it for weeks, months, years. He know what to tempt right. you with. Right. He know not to tempt you with cigarettes. Right. Because I don't, I don't like cigarettes. Right. He ain't gonna tip, he not going to spend and waste time doing that. Uh -huh. But he's going to tip me with some chicken. <laughs> 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 with I wonder some, why. Beef and uh, <laughs> pork and, uh, you know, well, not pork, not too much pork. Okay, right. he's going to tip me. If I'm a womanizer, he's going to tip me with women. Okay. Because he know that's what I want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he ain't reading my mind. Right. Okay, he just he's just looking at what I do anyway. Right. So there are there are no generational curses. Now, here we are. We have to be careful. We ain't got about about two minutes. Mm -hmm. We 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 have to be careful how we interpret scripture because that's how we get things wrong and that's why we do the rituals in church the way right. we do when we're wasting the people's time. Mm -hmm. and we say, You got generational curse, so we go call a loud preacher to the house and call all the family together and we say, We're gonna bind this generational curse right now, yada 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 yada. It's like a it's like a person who's got the Holy Ghost and goes and lay hands on you, try to heal you of something, uh, uh, deliver you from a spirit that's not in you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you a liar. Okay, and you, and the, you got this, you, and they come out lustful spirit, but the spirit of liar in you saying this this boy think that I'm <laughs> a right, liar spirit. Right, I'm right. a lust spirit. Right. What are you What are you doing? Is <laughs> spirit you Because you know if, if you're gonna ask if you want any type. Of a spiritual gift, you should ask for the discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. That will help you. Okay, so um, uh, um, I, I, I think it is important that we continue this conversation mm -hmm. because it's a hotbed topic. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, you do not. There is no generational curse in biblical sense. God says no more. He has freed you from the curse. Uh -huh. and you're no more under that. Once you became a part of Jesus Christ as your spiritual, as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. he has become the curse for us. Okay. And we'll talk about that probably Thursday at 5 o'clock. Listen, we got to go. We'll see you again Thursday, 5 o'clock. This is, is Sir Walter Jones of the Ask the Elder Show. All right. You've been listening to the Ask the Elder Show where he provides you with a biblical perspective for your everyday life. Stay connected to Elder Jones by visiting him online at facebook.com 
forward slash Ask the Elder. Stay tuned next week for the Ask the Elder show with Sir Walter Jones. <laughs>